Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a 360 degree panoramic painting using Photoshop CC 2018 and your digital painting application of choice. First, we'll need to download an Equa rectangular projection grid, and you can search for this on Google Image Search, and there's a few free options that you can download. Here's one that's just a grid, and here's a second option that is a grid with vanishing points. So you have a few different perspective views here. Right in the center is your frontal view, over on the left is the left view, and on the right is the right view. And then on the very far edges, those are going to combine to become your back view. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the grid that does not have the vanishing points because I can draw on the vanishing points manually. I'll go ahead and drag that grid into Photoshop and it opens as a JPEG. Next I'll go to image, image size, and I'm gonna resize this to a width of 2560 by 1280. You wanna make sure you don't squish the proportions. I'll go ahead and click on OK. That'll just make this a little bit larger and add a little bit more resolution so that our image can be more detailed. I'll zoom out just a hair and then I'll go to save as. And I wanna go ahead and save this as a PSD and I'll just call it 360 landscape one. We'll go ahead and save this. I'm also going to go to edit, assign profile and I'm gonna assign the Adobe RGB color profile just to expand the range of colors available in this piece. Then I'm gonna to go to save again, just to save those changes. Now we can go ahead and start sketching out our 3D composition here. So what we'll do is we'll go to the 3D menu. We'll choose spherical panorama and new panorama layer from selected layers. And now you'll notice that that curved grid straightens out. Now if we go to the move tool, and then we look over and make sure that our background is selected here. And then we go to the properties panel and we change the field of view from eight to one. We can simply drag within the window and we can explore the inside of our box. Pretty cool, huh? So what's really neat about this is we can actually paint and sketch inside of this box in real time in three dimensional space. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. I'm going to select the brush tool and I'm just going to use a red for my color and I'll just do a little doodle here. Now let's go back to our move tool. The shortcut for that is V and we can just simply drag and you can see that it's almost like we painted on that three dimensional wall. I'm gonna do a few undos to go back and remove that little doodle there. Let's go ahead and start sketching out our general composition. I'm gonna hold down shift so that I draw a straight line and I'm gonna go right down this center guide. This center guide is the eye level or the horizon line. This is important because we want things like clouds and mountains to be above the horizon line and things like rocks on the ground and grass to be below the horizon line. So that's your eye level and anything that's taller than you should be above it, anything that's shorter than you should be below it. So let's go ahead and mark an F for the frontal view, that way we know we're looking at the front, and we'll hold shift and we'll draw right along the horizon line. Then we'll switch back to the move tool, rotate to the right, go ahead and draw on that same line and continue it over, mark it right, keep rotating, mark the back B, and then continue rotating, draw your line and mark the remaining side as L for left. That way when we're drawing, we know which side of the cube we're looking at. This is important because the back side or the back view is going to have a seam where the two sides join together. And we wanna pay very careful attention to what we put on that seam because it's gonna be a little bit harder for that seam to blend together. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start sketching. I'm gonna to try to imagine that I'm now in a 3D virtual environment. And I'm just gonna rotate around and paint. I'm switching back and forth between the move tool with V and the brush with B. So again, clouds that are above you are above the horizon line, and anything that's shorter than you is going to be beneath the horizon line. Now there's a few areas you have to be careful with. One are the corners, because things will get kind of bent or wrapped around if you place them in the corners, but that might be okay for some things like clouds. Also, the very top center of the ceiling and the very bottom center of the floor are the poles, and you wanna to try to avoid placing things there as well because they can get kind of distorted. But this is just a sketch and we can test this out a little bit later and go back and forth and make corrections as we go along. I sketched in some indications of pine trees and you wanna use perspective as well. For example, as you work towards these vanishing points, which you can draw in manually using straight line drawing, you want everything to kind of converge or get smaller as it goes off into the distance into that vanishing point. So you can see my path that I'm drawing here on the ground. That's getting thinner and going off into the distance. And if it helps, draw those guides like I'm doing here. You can also use your eraser to clean up any lines you don't want. For example, I didn't like the way that path was shaped, so I'm gonna reshape that just a little bit and erase. 
Now you will be erasing over some of your grid lines, but that's okay at this point. It's not really gonna hurt anything if you do that. Now I'm gonna draw in a few trees. Maybe we'll do a pine tree. And I'll start with the tallest pine tree in the foreground. I'll use some guides to help me kind of line them up so that they're a similar height and they recede into the distance along the same vanishing point line. And we'll draw in a few more over on the right side as well, just like that. And those guidelines help you keep everything in perspective. Now I'm gonna draw a different kind of tree over here on the frontal view, and I'll just erase some of the junk from the background there and just sketch that in. We'll be looking up at the tree, so we'll be kind of seeing some of the branches going up into it from the underside. I'll also sketch in my sun. That's very important for a daylight scene because we're going to want to know which sides are the shadow side and which sides are the highlight side of each object. And that's going to change depending on your angle of view. I'll draw in a few little grass blades here. Keep in mind the angle of the lines on the grid lines, and any flat edges should follow those flat edges of the grid lines as well. I'll just continue sketching in a few more objects here and there. I might not keep all this stuff, it's just kind of a guide to help me visualize my 3D world. If it helps, you can check out some images of photographic panoramas, or you can just go outside and just look up, down, left, and right, and behind you, and that'll give you a good idea of where things should be placed. Now, I've painted a lot of landscapes in two dimensions. This is my first 3D landscape, but the principles are still pretty much the same. You just kind of have to know where to place things. And as you do this, and you go back and forth between drawing and viewing this in three dimensions, you'll get an idea of what's going to work and what doesn't. In fact, it only took me really a little bit of time to get this down and figure it out, because Photoshop makes it very easy with this new spherical panorama mode. So I think that'll work pretty well for my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and save my progress. And then let's go to the 3D menu. We'll go to spherical panorama, and we'll go to export panorama. And we can export this to be painted in any application we like, or if you prefer, you can just paint in Photoshop. That might be a little bit easier and save you a few steps. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PNG. That'll turn it back into that curvy equirectangular grid, and we can bring that flat image into any application. I'm gonna choose Corel Painter to do my painting. And you can see that our sketch is laid on top of our equirectangular grid, and we can go ahead and start painting. So I'll go ahead and name that sketch layer sketch, and I'll set the composite method to multiply. That way we'll be able to see it on top of other layers that we create. And I'm gonna create individual layers for each overlapping object. The sky will be on a layer, the ground will be on a layer, the trees will be on a layer, the clouds will be on a layer, and so on. I'll create a couple layers for the sky and the land. Let's go ahead and start with the land first because that's kind of defining the horizon, which is very important. I'll go ahead and use the rectangular marquee to draw a selection, and I'll just fill it with a greenish color and that helps establish where our land layer is. Now I'm gonna to go to the sky layer and I'm going to use the interactive gradient tool to draw in a gradient. It's very important to use the gradients tool for any gradations and color that are going to span the width of the canvas. This is because if your color is not the same at the seams on the backside, then you're going to see a difference in the color or you're gonna see a very obvious seam down the middle of your 3D panorama. So using those gradients, make sure that it's completely the same on both the left and the right side. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to Save As, and I'm going to save this as a PSD, that way I'm saving it with all my layers. I'm going to create an additional layer for a path, and I'll just use something like the Smooth Scratch Board just to draw in that path, and make sure the path doesn't go above the horizon line. Now, I'm only going to focus in this tutorial on how to paint the panorama from a technical point of view. I'm not going to focus on how to paint landscapes because I have plenty of videos you can watch on how to do that, so I will be kind of going a little bit quickly over the actual painting stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and save my progress, and then I'll save a copy as dash test. And this is a very important step because we want our original to have all of the layers, but when we go to preview this in Photoshop to look at it in 3D, we're gonna to have to look at a flattened image. So you wanna save the test, that way you can flatten the test and you can keep your original with all the layers. If you flatten it, look at it in Photoshop and accidentally save over your original, you're gonna lose all of your layers and you're gonna be very frustrated and have to start over. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and then I'll open my test in Photoshop. With that test image open, I'm going to hide the sketch layer, and then I'll go to Layer Flatten Image. That flattens down all of my layers into a single layer, and I'll go to 3D Spherical Panorama, New Spherical Panorama from Layer. I'll change my field of view back to 1. That just lets me see more of my 3D space. And I'll pan around and make sure that everything's looking good on the top, the bottom, the left and the right, and the front and the back. Now you may notice down at the very bottom, 
on that pole, there's kind of a weird seam there, and that's what I was talking about earlier. So that's why you want to avoid putting anything too complicated on the north pole, the south pole, or the back seam. I'm going to go ahead and just close this out since I'm done previewing it, and I'll go back to my original layered document, and I'll bring that back into Curl Painter, and I'll continue working on it. So I'll keep adding layers here for more objects, such as the hills in the distance, and clouds and everything else. And I'll just keep filling these in, keeping in mind that I want to avoid the front and back seams, and the north and south poles. And it's just really a back and forth process between painting a little bit, previewing, going back to painting, and previewing until you're done. Put in some clouds now. And you'll notice that on my cloud guides that I drew in, some of the bases of the clouds are a little bit curved. You want to make sure you follow those curves. You want to be painting in the equirectangular perspective, not in a regular frontal perspective like you'd be used to painting a landscape. So make sure that you follow those sketches pretty accurately. I'm going to put in some clouds at the top of the canvas, even though I recommend that you don't do this because it's actually going to look really wacky. I tried it just to see how it would look, and it doesn't look very good, so I end up erasing these clouds that are at the very top but I think it's nice for you to be able to see why you don't want to do something. So I'll go ahead and just leave this mistake in there. Just continue filling in my clouds. I'm using an oily clouds brush. This is a custom brush found in my custom workspace available at aaronrutten.com. I'm going to also go ahead and create a layer for the sun and I'll put in the sun. Now you might notice it's not a perfect sphere. It's a little stretched. And again, just like the clouds, things are going to be a little warped when you're painting them in this equi rectangular mode. Now I'm going to blur the edge of the horizon line, and I want things that are further away to be a little more blurry. That way it helps it look more natural. Then I'll go ahead and save my progress, and I'll save a copy as a test that we can bring into Photoshop and then test to make sure that it's working. So just like we did earlier, we'll go ahead and flatten our image, and then we'll go to 3D, Spherical Panorama, New Panorama from Selected Layers. We can change our field of view back to 1, and then we can use the move tool just to preview our 3D space and make sure that everything's working. If you see anything that doesn't look right, you may need to go back and correct it in Corel Painter or your digital painting application. However, if it's looking good, then you're on the right track. If we look up at this cloud, you can see it comes to like a weird spike. And then there's a seam where I didn't make the gradient perfect on the grass. And so we'll need to fix those two things. So I'll go ahead and close this out and go back to Corel Painter. I'm going to remove those clouds on the top and just get rid of those and clean up anything on the clouds that I don't want, especially near the seams. And then I'll go ahead and just redraw that gradient on my grass again, because if I hand paint it, there's a good chance that it's not going to match up and look right. So gradient tools for gradients works really, really well. It doesn't mean that you can't texture your grass and add more detail later, but the bulk of it needs to be a nice even gradient. So I'll go ahead and save my progress, save a test copy, and I'll go ahead and test it again to make sure that those changes are now working. Back in Photoshop, I can see that the top is fixed now, and that seam on the grass has been mostly fixed, although I do see a little bit of a faint seam, but that's to be expected. We can fix that later. So I'll go back into Curl Painter, and I'll continue adding more objects now. So I'm just adding some details to the mountain here. Again, I'm making sure to think about where my sun is located in relation to the object I'm shading. We want the highlights to be facing towards the sun and the shadows to be facing away from it. So you can see I'm not doing all the clouds the same, I'm not doing all the mountain peaks the same. I want the highlights to be pointing toward the sun. Again, if you're interested in learning how to paint landscapes in my technique, you can check out lots of courses. I actually do have a free course available. It's a landscape painting course, and you can find that on my website, aaronrutten.com. I have lots of other paid courses as well. I'm using the thick paint here in Corel Painter 2018 to add some texture to my path. That'll help it look like nice, lumpy, realistic dirt with texture bring my sketch back just to kind of see where I'm at with that. And I might want to add in some grass blades next. I'm doing that using a custom particle brush called Grass Blades. Now, I'm being a little quick about this because this is really just a demonstration of how to make a panorama. I probably will make more of these in the future that are much more detailed, but this should give you a pretty good idea of how to do it, and you can spend as much time as you want on your painting. I'm going to now add some more texture to the grass on a separate layer, and I can just imply all the rest of the grass blades. I don't need to draw every single blade of grass here. The ones in the distance, you won't even really be able to see much detail in those. The little lines that I'm putting on the path, I want to make sure that those follow the curvature of the equirectangular grid so that it fits in. And then I'll go ahead and lighten the top edge of the path so that it looks like it's going off into the distance. 
might even change up the color in a few places so that it's not all one flat color. And then we can go ahead and test it again in Photoshop. Looking around, I think it's starting to come together pretty well. There's still that weird spot on the ground on the south pole. I need to change my field of view back to one there so I can see more. There's a cloud that's a little funky on the top, but again, we can fix all that stuff a little bit later. So let's go back into Curl Painter and let's add yet some more detail. Anywhere where you see that you need to fix things after previewing in Photoshop, go ahead and fix them, make improvements, add more details. And again, it's just a back and forth process. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some stones now using my thick paint brushes. And just like everything else, the stones need a shadow on a highlight side, so keep the lighter side of the stone facing towards the sun and put the shadow facing away from the sun. We also want the stones to not look like they're floating, so we need to erase a bit of the bottom so that it looks like the grass is kind of growing up over the bottom edge of the stone. And anything that's kind of tall should cast a bit of a shadow from the sun, so I'll put in a shadow on a separate layer. Those shadows will be angled pointing away from the sun, and depending on the angle of the sun, you might have a longer shadow or a shorter shadow. If the sun is high in the sky, then it'll be a shorter shadow. If it's lower in the sky, then it'll be a longer shadow. I'll add in some little debris and mud and dirt and stuff here on the path just to add more detail to that as well. I think that's starting to look pretty good. Let's go ahead and test again. I'll take a look down at my rocks and make sure that the angle of the shadow looks all right. It's not perfect, but I think that'll work. And just check some of the other rocks as well and all the other details that you just added. I think that's working, so let's go back to Curl Painter. I'm gonna add in some distant trees. And I also wanna blur them a little bit and maybe just augment the color so that they look a little more distant. And then I can start adding in some of my foreground trees. I'll do my trunks separate from my leaves. Now this tree that's in the center, we're going to be looking at the underside of it. So we wanna make sure that we can see a little bit of the branches going up into the leaves. So I think that's all the detail I wanna add. Let's go ahead and preview this again in Photoshop for the final time. Just take a good look around and make sure that everything looks right. Look for any weird transitions or seams or anything that doesn't look right. And if you see anything like that, you can go back into your digital painting application and correct it there, or we can make a few minor corrections here in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and get the blur tool and I'll just blur some things that are in the distance to make them look further away. This cloud up here at the top looks kind of weird. So we might wanna blend that a little bit we can use the mixer brush just to blend it a bit and clean up the edges so it doesn't look like it's getting distorted and it looks like a normal natural cloud. I also think some of the branches on the tree are a bit too sharp, so I'm gonna use the smudge tool just to very lightly smudge over them, which just kind of blends them a little bit. I think that helps them look a little more natural. We also wanna look straight down and we wanna fix that south pole there just by blending that a little bit to get rid of those weird seams. I think that really helps. And since we've made a few changes here in Photoshop, let's go ahead and just go to Save As and let's just save a copy of our artwork. We'll save that as a PSD. And let's look around for any last minute changes. I might wanna blur some of those grass blades a little bit with the blur tool. But other than that, I think it's starting to look like a finished 3D panoramic painting. So let's go ahead and save our progress. And then if we want to process this into a panorama that we can then upload to Facebook or anywhere else that supports 360 panoramas, we'll go to 3D, Spherical Panorama, and then Export. Let's go ahead and save this as a JPEG. And now if we want, we can upload that JPEG to Facebook and then we can preview it as a 3D Spherical Panorama. Now this is only one way to view it. If you have a VR headset or if your smartphone supports it, you can actually look around the landscape as well, which is really cool. So there you go. That's how you can turn a digital painting into a three-dimensional world that you can look around using Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital painting tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.